Well, we have these uh, new traffic light tiers, although, of course, it's sort of amber, red and dark red, really, rather than uh, any green. The uh, vast majority of the country is in tier one, facing the same restrictions we've got right now. Medium rule of six, 10 p.m. curfew. Uh, Liverpool region, tier three. Your area, of course, uh, Manchester, tier two is a high uh, measure. Uh, big fears, though, that your uh, region might actually be put into tier three very soon. What are your concerns? My concern is that the government are pressurising places into tier three, but without providing adequate uh, economic support. Um, it will have uh, a real impact here, real harm to our economy if lots of uh, businesses in the hospitality and leisure sector are forced to close. So it would be different if tier three was coming uh, with it, the proper support, Julia, but it isn't. Uh, and that's, that's, I would say, the problem, the, one of the major problems with it. The second problem is what the chief medical officer said last night, that uh, even if you go for the full tier three option, it's unlikely to work. So it won't even get the results either. So I do think the government's going to have to uh, talk to us about this and come up with a with a better option for areas that that. Um, that it wants to see go further. Well, a lot of the mayors and the council leaders and indeed the MPs representing the, the, the great cities of the north have said that you've been treated really with quite a lot of disrespect, rather high-mindedly by the government. Uh, people being sort of summoned to Zoom meetings five minutes after they've started, reading about things on Twitter. Um, we've had in uh, Steve Rotherham in Liverpool, the Prime Minister's claiming that they came to an agreement. He said on Twitter, no, we didn't. Uh, the mayor for Liverpool, the city mayor, Sir Joe Anderson, saying that it was uh, locked down by diktat. Um, are you saying you don't agree with the government's measures or are you saying you agree with the government's measures, you just want more money to make up for it? No, I think it's, it's both of those things. They're asking us to accept a lot of pain without necessarily paying for a purpose, i.e. to get the results, because the chief medical officer said last night that he didn't think uh, the tier three measures would be enough. So what I'm saying to you, Julia, is I, I don't want uh, a winter where large parts of the north are suffering in tier three, not getting the support that they need and not bringing the cases back down. I, I don't think that is a, a good good way forward, actually, for the country. I, I, I would prefer, if we were given the option, a circuit break, a national circuit break, uh, to a sort of ineffective, underfunded tier three option. OK. Um, and when you say a circuit break, you mean going back to effectively a full lockdown? Well, this is what Sage is saying, isn't it? A shorter, sharper lockdown that would kind of allow everybody to, re to reset things, particularly ahead of the winter. It would give you the time to localise, test and trace, which finally now is being accepted by the government as the right way to go. We've been saying it all year on your programme. Finally, we, we make a breakthrough there. So, you know, a, a national circuit break could allow the resetting of a lot of policies that would actually then put us in a stronger well, position going yeah. forward. I don't think the tier three approach, where it will cause substantial economic pain, but without getting the results, is going to be the way to go. OK, but, <clears throat> what, but this is the thing I don't understand. Why anyone thinks of this idea of I mean, circuit breaker? It doesn't break the circuit. It just delays things. Uh, they've suggested, the SAGE advisors, two weeks, uh, you, you know, you cut, cut everyone go back to sort of March, April time lockdown. Um, and we understand that Boris Johnson had agreed to that. And it was Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, who, who, who frankly, in my view, saved us from it. Um, but they said, you know, and then you go back and then you effectively you, you have slower growth for a month. But then you start again. Are you saying that in those two weeks, despite the last six, seven months that the government has had to organise all of this stuff, Public Health England, Test and Trace, everything else. You're saying that within those two weeks, the government's going to get a grip of the Test and Trace system. We're going to be able to isolate all these cases and we're going to be on top of it. Because I've got to be honest with you, I don't believe that's going to happen for a moment. Well, I don't want a circuit break any more than you do, uh, Julia, and hopefully we won't need it because the, the cases won't rise to a point where it is uh, needed. But if we do need a more serious intervention, I'm saying to you that I think a circuit break would be better than an underfunded, ineffective tier three option. What, what we've learned in Greater Manchester, because bear in mind, we've been under these restrictions for 10 weeks uh, now, is that they are of limited effectiveness. That's the kindest thing I, I could say. They, they have a sort of dampening effect on the number of cases, but they don't drive them back down in the in the other direction. So I, I we're sceptical here that tier three will work. But be, be beyond that, what we had last night was the chief medical officer saying, if tier three is to have any results, you've got to close pubs, restaurants, gyms, bars, nail salons, hair, the whole lot, massive chunk of the economy. But the government are offering support to, to close a massive chunk of the economy. So 
I hope you can see our dilemma in some ways, uh, Julia. We're, we're in a bit of a rock and a hard place here. Of course, we will act to protect the health of our residents, but we can't just surrender you know, a huge swathe of our economy to I, collapse. I think, look, I think anyone in the position of having to make any of these decisions is between a rock and a hard place. My heart goes out to, to Boris Johnson, region out, you know, Health Secretary, yourself and others as well. I mean, lucky for us to sit here and, make, and comment and have a view, but not actually have to live with the consequences. And I fully accept that. However, there is just so much evidence that this virus, when it grows, it grows. Look, we had people out doing, you know, an eat out to help out throughout the whole of month of August. We had huge swathes of people moving to Cornwall and Devon for weeks on holiday. We have not seen an increase in cases there. Much of the South East, no increase as well. Um, there is every possibility that this virus, even despite the lockdown, Greater Manchester, throughout that whole lockdown period, still had growth in cases. Every possibility this virus is going to spread, how this virus spreads. And all of these human actions that cost millions upon millions, even billions and billions of pounds, will make not a darn bit of difference unless you just lock down in our homes forever and ever. In which case, do you not think it would make sense to look at the Swedish model, where they are seeing far, far lower rates right now? It's believed they do now have now developed some herd immunity uh, and actually were uh, stopping the spread of the virus. And that actually the methods we have been using don't work, will not work and are not sustainable in the long run. Well, I'm not of that of that view. Uh, I do think you still have to, um, to to contain the virus as best that you can. What I would agree with you, though, on, Julia, is that this halfway house model, the tiers model, does not appear to work because you're neither doing one thing nor the other. And I think that's the problem with it. It's, it's um, not sufficiently effective. So I think, um, given where we are, I think that the circuit break idea is one that we're going to have to bear in mind. I'm not saying do it now, but I'm saying bear in mind because it also then allows you to put in place what is needed to try and allow us to live our lives, which is a fully functioning test and trace system. That's what we're told. Get the cases down to a low level and then start again with a system that's actually going to work rather than the one we've, we've had for months. And Said said last night that we've spent billions on this system and it's of uh, minimal effectiveness. I mean, that is a damning uh, indictment on on what's been done so far. So that's what I'm putting to you. You know, we, we, we kind of almost reset everything and then see if we can uh, do better. And actually, I will be really prepared, Julia, to take responsibility for a localised test and trace system coming out of a circuit break uh, situation where you know, we're on the spot to see if we can do it, do it better. I'd be happy to take that the accountability that, that comes with that. I think it'd be a better place than where we are okay. now, which is powerless in many ways to act and then just hit constantly with restrictions. That's the worst of all worlds.